We have a new faction leader, Vol Jin. Now these are big shoes to fail, considering the last leaders were Thrall and Garrosh, both who went on to do great things. Garrosh terrible, yes, but great things. A troll governing an orc city, maintaining an alliance of trolls, torrents, and deads, orcs, and elves. Now that's a hard thing to do. Does it have what it takes? To understand Vol'jin and where he comes from, we have to understand what he does. Vol'jin is a shadow hunter. Now think of a shadow hunter like a shaman, but instead of communing with the elementals, they commune with spirits. These spirits are called Loas. To give you guys some perspective, Loas are stronger than elementals, but weaker than gods. That being said, anything can be a Loa. A rock, blood, a human, a cat, an ancient power of cataclysmic proportions, really anything. As long as that which you're trying to commune with has transcended the inexistence of death or the physical realm. Now, the way it works with shadow hunters with these spirits, it's also a little bit different. For the most part, a shaman will try to appease the elementals by calming them down, which pretty much turns into hearing their troubles and helping them in whatever form the shaman deems necessary. And as a reward, they get the trust of the elementals. Now, after this trust is earned, the shaman can call upon these elementals almost like a friend would, and they, after that, are at the beck and call of the shaman. It is a relationship of respect and bonding that is earned. For the shadow hunter, it's more about bargains and deals and a friendship. Friendships can be earned with these spirits, but for the most part, they will ask for something and in return, they'll give you power. The easiest way to see it is by the fact that these Loas, at least most of them, used to be people before, or living things in general. They have wants and needs, desires, greed, really most things that a sentient being would have. Others have been primal forces from the beginning, but get stronger the more offerings they receive, so the concept of greed is not lost to them. Now, the cool part about a shadow hunter is that the powers that you get for communing with these spirits changes depending on the spirit that you're convoking. The spirit of a great ancient boar could give you extraordinary power, an old spider could give you immunity to poison, or an ancient tribe protector could turn you into a bear. Its effects extremely varies, and there are all kinds of things that can happen from these exchanges of power. We never die. <laughs> To appease these Loas, however, is where Voodoo comes into place. Voodoo is a traditional way of appeasing the Loas, a type of divine magic that combines shadow and nature magic with some alchemy on the side. What happens in some of these Voodoo rituals really depends on the Loas that you're appeasing, but it is well known that a lot of troll tribes sacrifice hundreds of trolls in some rituals, and in others, even resort to cannibalism. Might seem weird to you to use cannibalism to appease the spirits, but thing is, some of these spirits actually are jealous of living beings. Some of them wish they could still be alive, which in turn makes them rage against the living. The trolls, to evade this, eat themselves because they believe that when you eat somebody, the spirit gets destroyed or at least severed enough for them to not be able to lash out against you. The types of voodoo also differ depending on your class, so a shadow hunter practices it a little bit different than, say, a witch doctor does. A witch doctor is more akin to an alchemist or an apothecary, using voodoo to fuel concoctions, where a shadow hunter is more akin to a killer or a warrior, sacrificing enemies or allies. Now, did you know that in Warcraft 3, Vol'jin actually used the in-game model of a witch doctor? He was probably first intended to be one in the beginning, although chances are they didn't want him to be confused with Rokan, who was also a shadow hunter. Another hilariously interesting thing is that he, alongside Sol the Sandcrawler, are the only trolls in the entire game of World of Warcraft that possess facial hair. Honestly, go look, there's no other troll in the game with facial hair. So now, back to Vol'jin. We know what he does, but who is he though? Let's go back years, guys, a long time ago in Warcraft 3. The Dark Spirit tribe at the time had been driven away from their homeland, which was in the mainland of Stranglethorn Vale. They were driven away by tribe disputes with the main Guravashis. They settled on what we assume is nowadays the Lost Isles. In there, the tribe suffered enormous assaults by murloc raids. Constant everyday assaults. Senjin, who is Vol'jin's father and leader of the tribe at the time, forced Vol'jin to take his initiation trial into becoming a shadow hunter earlier than what was expected. You see, Senjin saw visions of the future. Visions granted by the Loa that served him, and in these visions, he saw the tribe had no future in this island and that time was running short. So Vol'jin went on his initiation with his childhood friend Salzane. 
Now, we know that Salazin was the one that stole the Echo Isles from the trolls in World of Warcraft, which was the reason they were forced into Orgrimmar to live, but did you know that during this initiation, both Vol'jin and Salazin saw a vision of the future, and in this vision, they both saw that at some point they were going to be forced to battle each other to the death. A vision that, of course, we know eventually happened. Visions given by the Loas are almost always right, and are the main way for shadow hunters and witch doctors to, sometimes, see into the future. Remember this, cause it'll be important later. Now, the interesting thing is that this initiation seemed to have only lasted a week to him, but in the real world, it lasted for three months. So when Vol'jin came out of there, his tribe was nearly destroyed by Mortlocks and a sudden human invasion. All seemed hopeless, but thanks to the sudden intervention of Thrall and his ships full of orcs that happened to be passing by on their way to Durotar, a lot of the tribe was saved, except Senjin who ended up dying saving his people. Now this is when the Darkspear trolls bowed to serve the Horde, as thanks for Thrall saving their lives that fateful day. Now did you know, even though most trolls left with Thrall as he sailed to Durotar, Vol'jin actually stayed in the Lost Isles for a very long time. He wanted to weather the attacks of the Sea Witch that controlled all the Murlocs for a while longer to gather as many supplies as possible before leaving, something that took him an entire year. Thanks to this, he ended up missing the entire battle against the Burning Crusade. You see some trolls in that battle who are those that followed Thrall, but their chief was stuck fighting Murlocs instead in the Lost Isles. Now eventually, Vol'jin brought the remaining trolls to the Echo Isles, where he founded his troll city and settled there. And we know that after that, Salsin came and took over the Isles by mind controlling a lot of the trolls and disrupting their affinity to the Loas, something that surprised everyone, that's a lot of power right there. Regardless, after a couple of expansions, he managed to take it back thanks to a specific Loa that I will talk about a little bit later, and thanks to a lot of planning, of course. Anyways, this is pretty much his upbringing as a leader. He didn't really start with that much experience, and he was extremely young when his father died. Because of this is why you always saw the Dark Spirit Trolls kind of take more of a backseat when it came down to the big events in the world of Azeroth. Twice were the times when the Echo Isles were attacked, and twice were the times when they decided to escape the Isles instead of staying and fight. Something very different than what it is used to be seen by the troll tribes. They would rather die fighting. Vol'jin's power, however, not just as a troll, but as a leader, comes from his strategic mind. He's the only racial leader in the Horde that Thrall would always have at his side in any decision making, especially those that had to do with fighting. He has always been of a mind for tactics and strategy. This is important because if you guys remember, it was Thrall at the end of Pandaria that chose Vol'jin to become the next warship of the Horde. A decision he did not choose lightly, and we will spend the next couple of minutes exactly figuring out why. Vol'jin is not just smart, but he's wise and honorable. As soon as Garrosh assumed control of the Horde, Vol'jin foresaw the issues that were being born thanks to Garrosh's hatred and anger, and from the get-go opposed the bloodshed inflicted by him. They are no longer part of my Horde! <laughs> Now, during the events of Cataclysm and Pandaria, Vol'jin would go and cement his relationship with the other racial leaders in a way that could completely bypass most of World of Warcraft players. Not because some of them are very subtle, but because most of these events actually happened in the novels and are never really shown in the game. During the entirety of Cataclysm, the relationship between the Orcs and the Torrents started to die out, and quickly. Garish had killed Karen in a duel, and every decision that he made after that angered Bane. From the mana bomb that exploded Thuramor Castle, to the inclusion of Blackrock Orcs into the mix of the Horde, all decisions that Vayne had previously advised against, and that without even mentioning Garrus's complete disrespect of Vayne during these conversations. But you know who was always in Bane's side? Vol'jin. For most of Cataclysm, Vol'jin became a solid friend to Bane. They would converse about the war, about Garrosh and his anger, about the possibility of guarding each other's back if their case arose that either of them would need it if Garrosh would completely lose it. This bond, even if not as strong in this case, would also arise in Pandaria when Vol'jin sided with Lord Themar of the Blood Elves when tensions grew red between the Blood Elves and Garrosh's orcs. Vol'jin told Themar that he would be at his side if it turned to that, and conversed about the possibility of a rebellion to take down Garrosh and bring peace back. Vol'jin was also instrumental and the one to thank for, for the peace between the Alliance and the Horde, since it was Vol'jin who agreed to ask help of the Alliance that they would attack by ship while the rebellion attacked the gates from the front, in an effort to together take down Orgrimmar. An effort that, after the attack, resulted in both factions being at peace, even if tenuous. When Thrall said that Vol'jin kept the Horde together during all of these events, he meant it. If it wasn't for Vol'jin, the Tarans and the Blood Elves would have probably left the Horde and then it would have just been a matter of time until the Alliance would destroy the bloodthirsty Garrosh and his Horde. 
So we know where he comes from and, and we know what got him here, but is he going to be different than Garrosh? I mean, shadow hunters are not known for being nice or pacifist. Hell, if anything, most people in Azeroth would consider them evil because of the heinous crimes they make to please the Loas. Well, that's the interesting part. You see, back in Cataclysm, Vol'jin was met by an envoy of the Sandalari troll tribe. He was asked to come into a meeting of troll leaders with members of the Gorovashi tribe, the Amani tribe, the Ice Trolls, and more to form an alliance. An alliance whose goal was to take back the lands of the trolls and bring back the might of the troll empire back in Sandalari times. You see, back before the Sundering, when the world was at Pangea, there was only one massive big troll tribe, and that was the Sandalari tribe. Their might spanned the entire planet, but after the Sundering happened and the land split, the entire troll empire split into multiple halves. You had trolls stuck in the north that became the Ice Trolls of Suljarak, you had the Amani Trolls in the Ghostlands, the Gorobashi Trolls in Stranglethorn Vale, and the Sand Fury Trolls in Tenaris. They owned a lot more land than this before, but because of massive starvations thanks to the Sundering, their small empires turned even smaller to what you see today. Anyways, all the trolls were getting together to form the Sandalari tribe again, unite all the troll nations and take back the land that was rightfully theirs. Vol'jin was one of the troll tribes that said no to this, stating that bloodshed wasn't the way and that he already had a family in the Horde, and that if war was what they wanted, that Vol'jin would fight back. It shows the honor of Vol'jin, his wisdom, but more importantly his peace loving mind. He wants no bloodshed, no war, no unnecessary killings. Even much so, in fact, that Vol'jin actually warned the members of the Alliance about this unification of the Trolls, to make sure that they were prepared to face them. Something that Garrosh would have never done. He would have hoped the Trolls would attack the Alliance by surprise and then take advantage of that surprise to finish them off. So Vol'jin is wise, strategic, honorful, pacifist, has a powerful bond of trust with the Torrents and the Blood Elves, especially so since he also warned the Blood Elves about the Amani insurrection that was about to happen. He also practiced the arts of the monk with Chen Stormstout while stuck in his village, because did you know, Garish actually tried to assassinate him. His plot to kill Vol'jin barely failed and Vol'jin had to rest while wounded with Chen in his village for a while. During this meantime, Vol'jin would go and help defend his village from attackers, forever earning him the trust of the Pandaring people. Fun fact, if you look at some of the models for Vol'jin, you'll find some that have this scar in the neck. This scar is from this attack. Vol'jin can easily regenerate it if he wants to with his troll powers, but he chose not to, as it would be a reminder of his failure getting himself in a position to trust a person like Garrosh. The scar would also change his voice, deepening it, as to even more so change himself from who he was before. He, for the moment, sounds like the perfect warsheath for the Horde, but the last thing we haven't touched is, well, his powers. We mentioned before that he has massive shoes to fill, coming from Gul'dan, Orkrim Doomhammer, Thrall and Garrosh, all impossibly powerful warriors, capable of amazing things. But... But this is Vol'jin's specialty. As a master shadow hunter and the strongest of them all, Vol'jin can cast fire, electricity, manipulate the elements, cast storms, heal the wounded, transform enemies into creeps, polymorph himself into a druid, impossibly fast regeneration and invisibility. His allegiance to the Loa allows him to command the armies of the dead. He's also one of the only living beings in the world who can revive a falling allies, including himself. Virtually invincible, his Loa is Won Sambi, the master of death. He who empowers Vol'jin and prevents him from dying to collect souls for the dead god. He gave him a vision of the future, a future where Vol'jin destroys the world and ushers a new age for the Horde. This is your new Warsheaf. You subscribe.